Morning everyone, I hope you're keeping well and welcome to the next video in my Ask Ali series and today's video is going to be all about wedges. Um, I've had a couple of questions come in from Seth Gibbons and from Mark Halliwell asking me about wedges uh, and so what I'm going to do in this video is answer each of their questions and maybe just give you some general advice um, on, the, on wedges and how best to use them. So in my golf bag I've got four wedges I've lined up here. Um, so the lowest lofted wedge in my bag is my pitching wedge. Um, so this is a ping G410 pitching wedge um, and the loft angle of the club is 44 and a half degrees so I've got 44 and a half degrees of loft on that and that's the first thing I wanted to talk to you about uh, with wedges is it's important to have the correct loft um, gaps the, the correct spacing between each wedge so my wedges here I've got my pitching wedge which is 44 and a half I've then got a 50 degree wedge 54 and a 58. Now, a few years ago, I was very fortunate. I got to meet Bob Vokey, who's the lead wedge designer for Titleist. So he's worked with um, all the best players in the world, Tiger Woods and people like that on their wedges. And Vokey's recommendations are you should have no less than four degrees, um, but no more than six degrees of loft between your wedges. So when you're looking at your bag like I was there, you should have somewhere like four, five, six degrees of loft between each, uh, between each wedge. Now I mentioned there my pitching wedge is 44 and a half degrees. It's harder to know the lofty pitching wedge because quite often it isn't stamped on the bottom. You know, for example, this is my lob wedge and a lot of wedges nowadays will have the, uh, the loft stamped on and pitching wedges generally don't. Um, but what I would say is a quick 30 second search on Google and you should be able to find the lofty pitching wedge without too much trouble. But I can tell you now, if it's a modern pitching wedge that's produced in the last four or five years, it's gonna be pretty strong. It's going to be 43, 44, 45 degrees, somewhere in that kind of region, which is a lot lower than some people think. And I actually see a lot of golfers who maybe have a 56 degree sand wedge and then their pitching wedge, and they assume that they're quite close together and quite often they can be 10, 12 degrees apart. And that actually creates um, some difficulties in terms of controlling the distance. So if you don't know the lofty pitching wedge, get on Google and check it out. Uh, it won't take you long. Um, so after the pitching wedge comes the gap wedge. So as I mentioned, this is my 50 degree gap wedge there. And the phrase gap wedge has really come from a, a gap that's opened up in the bag. Um, as pitching wedges have got lower lofted over the years, sand wedges have stayed at the same kind of loft to help you get out of a bunker. So a new wedge was born, the gap wedge. It's a pitching wedge in, in old money, um, but somewhere around about 48, 50, 52 degrees of loft is a, is a gap wedge. And that for me pretty much just does the job of, uh, of filling the, the distance gap between my pitching wedge and my sand wedge. I'll use it a little bit around the green on some lower shots, but not too much. Uh, then we move up into our um, sand wedge so for me my sand wedge is 54 degrees it also has 12 degrees of bounce on it um, so sand wedges would generally be around a 40 uh, sorry 54 55 56 degrees somewhere around about there and this is where we need to start talking about the bounce angle of the club. Now, when we talk about the bounce angle, we're talking about the bottom of the club here. A lot of the time you'll hear pro shops or golf videos talk about bounce and maybe sometimes it's assumed everyone knows what we're talking about. Um, what it is, it's all to do with the thickness of the sole, the camber of it um, and the angle of it. And when we talk about the bounce angle, if I hold the wedge up there to the camera, you can see that the bottom of that wedge is not flat at all. It's angled up and the leading edge here is higher than the trailing edge. So very roughly, there's an angle on it and that's about a 12 degree angle on this wedge. That's the bounce angle of this wedge. So that would be a bounce angle of zero. That would be a bounce angle of 45 degrees. Most wedges will probably have somewhere between six and 14 degrees of bounce, depending on the conditions you're playing in. Um, and this is one of the questions that um, Mark was asking, uh, what bounce to use in what conditions, particularly when it comes to firm sand or, or very wet sand. A really simple way to think about bounce, and, and this is the golden rule you've just got to remember um, when it comes to selecting wedges for the job, is the more bounce a club has, so the higher the bounce angle, the higher the leading edge, the more the club wants to bounce off the surface that you're hitting into, whether that's turf, sand, whatever. So if the f f surface is quite firm, and it will naturally kind of bounce the club off it. You probably don't want too much bounce. So for example, specifically with Mark's questions, if it's wet sand, a lot of bounce is gonna hurt you because that club will hit the sand and bounce off it um, and at, you'll struggle to get down and underneath the ball. So for example, a sand wedge in a bunker when it's wet might not necessarily be the right club. So you might potentially look for a club with a little bit less bounce on it. So for example, my lob wedge here has six degrees of bounce on it. It's a 58 degree with six degrees. So it's got a sharper sole on it. It doesn't have as much bounce on it. If I had really firm uh, wet sand, that's the club I would be reaching for. Uh, and conversely, if I had uh, really fluffy sand that was very dry and maybe there was a lot of sand in the bunker, that would probably be the worst club I could reach for. And I'd reach for my, um, my sand wedge over there. So I would definitely 
chop and change between my 54 and my 58 depending on the sand conditions and that's also true for turf conditions as well if it was rock hard turf i'd prefer lower bounce maybe if i'm playing a lynx course by the seaside and then similarly if i was playing a wet muddy course in the uh, winter uh, then i might choose something with a little bit more bounce on it um, and then that's the sand wedge and then we're into the lob wedge here so 58 degrees is my uh, lob wedge there that's the highest lofted club i carry um, you can get lob wedges that are 60 62 64 degrees aloft um, a word of warning, I'm not a huge fan of that much loft. Um, I would certainly, for people that come and get fitted by me, um, we do a lot of wedge fittings. I generally draw the line at 60. I would suggest a lot of people have 58 degrees as, as, of loft as their maximum club. When I see um, club golfers trying to use 62s and 64s, it's a bit of a recipe for disaster. You really have to be very, very skilled to use those clubs. And I'll be honest, we don't face the conditions where you need them. You know, if you're Phil Mickelson and you're playing in the US Open, and it's rock hard greens and six inch rough and you're the best short game player in the world you can probably justify carrying a 64 if you're playing a typical parkland course in the uk you ain't going to face a shot where you need 64 degrees aloft so if you've got one in the bag and it is pretty temperamental i would be tempted to chuck that out and get something more useful in there um yeah so 58 for me is the uh, is the highest lofted club there um so i use that for obviously any shots where i'm looking for maximum height um for me probably 54 is my go-to club around the green so i'll play the majority of my shots with the the 54 um and that's really for two reasons um it's still got loads of loft on it so it will produce lots of loft 58 has got so much loft it will almost be a, well, I struggle to hit it far enough sometimes um, so I think you can use too much loft around the greens quite often um, and also by having less bounce on it it wants to dig into the ground more so less bounce means more dig it probably just makes it a little bit less forgiving than my sand wedge so this was kind of um, said's question what would be your kind of go-to universal wedge for, for most chip and pitch shots it would be a sand wedge for me so that would be a 54 56 maybe 10 12 degrees of bounce something like that um, and then I would move away from that. So I might go down to the 50 if I wanted a lower shot. I might go up to the 50 if I wanted more loft um, and then choose the bounce uh, accordingly. Um, so hopefully that gives you a few pointers on uh, what wedges you should be carrying and, and when to use them. Um, when we do get back to normal, um, if you want to come along and have a wedge fitting uh, at Tiverton, we've got this amazing short game area uh, and we've got loads of demo wedges and we can talk you through all that theory, but there's nothing like trying it in the real world. You know, you might not know if you like low bounce or high bounce until you've actually gone in a bunker and actually tried it. So uh, it's definitely something I would, I would strongly recommend uh, trying when we uh, when we do get back out there on the golf course so hopefully that has um, sparked a bit of uh, short game thought in there um, please keep the questions coming for uh, for ask Ali and I will see you guys all again very soon all right take care